Hello and welcome back to the Smart Bus Implementation Series. We're in part 20. This is just an episode to help you set up a really quick bid process, whether it's a bid sheet or a quote page, just something that you can quickly get in the hands of the customer and they can be on their way. So in this project here, um, just pretty basic barn, a couple of doors, windows. And then when I go to my outputs, I, I can have a really easy process by, by checking a box and downloading whether it's a Word document or a PDF that I've set up here. And it could look something like this. So I've, got, I've done this ahead of time, open this up. So you can see I can download a document that outlines the project and it can have all the details on it that I want to have or want it. And I can take or have this many details or exclude some of these. This is just an example. And this document, it is a basic Word document. So you can set it up in, in whatever format that you'd like. Um, it, it works best if you make any changes to any of our templates to be using Word uh, versus Google Docs or anything like that. So it's best to use Word to, to make any changes to these templates. So if you're if you just signed up with Smart Build, you'll notice in the in the template, if you go to settings and outputs, you're going to have several different versions here to, to get you started and give you some ideas. So in the new post frame quote, one page, two page, again, these are four examples that you can look at. If you want to try those out and look at them, you can see what they do. If you want to edit them or download them, you can you can click click right on the line and click edit, and it opens up this window that you can download it and look see what it looks like. Now this is downloading the template, and if you look at these templates, they they make look may look a little bit strange right to begin with, and if you look at one of these, you'll see that we we use what we call tokens, and then there's a mixture of tokens which the the system will fill in with each job along with your predefined text. So if you if you look at how some of these are laid out, I'll give you some ideas. But again, you can add any detail that you want. Uh, maybe there's more. There's not enough detail and you want to add more. So how do you how do you add more detail to one of these? You may you may have that as a question. And the answer to that is you can simply in that menu, you can download a sample file and this sample docx file is basically every single token that we offer as of today. So if, if we offer new ones, you can always come in here and download it and maybe add them to yours. So when we look at this, this sample file here, it starts out with all the job, the framing rule questions, and then we've got the images. And again, you can just copy these images and rearrange them, put them on a document, however you want. So we have the elevation images. We've more recently, we added this QR code. So if you wanna put it somewhere on your document, you do have to maintain that normal size for a QR code. There's a minimum requirement for that. So again, these can all be used along with all this, all these texts. So you just have to look at them and you may just want to copy them directly over. So copy and paste onto your document. So you make sure you got the text exactly the way that it is. So if we look at any of these, you'll see there's, there's several pages of, of tokens that you could use. Obviously you don't need all these. Um, so a lot of them are irrelevant to you. But again, getting back to that actual document and just talking about that process for a bit. So you design the job that you want. You, you may add your labor, your freight, concrete, things like that that apply to the customer. And then you simply download that bid sheet. So when we look at these bid sheets, there's also something else you can do to kind of clean up this output. Because if you look at mine, when I go to outputs and click download, I've got several documents I've got to sort through and try to figure out which one I want to use. So if you want to simplify that menu, what you can do is in the in the output section in in settings, there is a checkbox that which outputs are shown depending on what state that job is in. So if you hide any of these outputs, as long as if I would hide it when when the job is new, then I would have to make it a quote before this output would show up on my list. So basically, you wouldn't be seeing all the outputs until that job reaches a certain status. And again, the job statuses, you, you can make a job a quote that basically, you know, lets you know that you've, you've sent the quote to the customer. And then that quote is, or that project is in a quoted stage, it's been locked. And then you could see here where you could have new outputs show up. So you have some outputs like co contracts or proposals that may not be necessary until a job reaches a certain stage. So you can simply hide it here. And again, these are all, these are, templates are in here if you, if you've recently just signed up with SmartBid, you should have all these. Now, if you're coming back 
uh, watching this video and you maybe you did your setup um, some time ago and you want to fine tune your outputs and maybe add new ones, you can reach out to our team if you need these templates. We can provide them just to give you ideas and examples. So if you look at this template, again, it's just a Word document. Anyone can edit it. And then when we look a little bit closer at what you get when this job is converted or when you output this from a job. So this, this example kind of carries over onto two pages. And if you notice, it's really nice to, to output this in a Word document so that if the salesperson needs to edit it, maybe it's kind of cutting it off between two pages where it doesn't make sense. You may just want to hit enter a few times, clean it up where you have a nice, you know, two pages that make sense versus having the doors half on one page and half on another. So if you leave it in a Word document, you can really easily do that. And it's really nice to edit. Now, on the other hand, if you if you do opt to output this as a PDF, it can be done that way. And it's very simple to change these. So if you if you want to output this as a PDF, you could simply edit this report and change the output type to from DocX to PDF. It's very simple to do that. So if we look at you know how this is set up or if we want to set up a new one, you can click add new. We want to pick the type and the type needs to be document template. And again, if, you, if you've had a database for some time, you, yours may be set to legacy, and we do plan on um, getting rid of this and removing it, so you don't want to use legacy. We need to be using the actual document template, which is a new version. So you could give it a name, call it whatever you want, um, bid, and give it a name, something that makes sense to you or your team, and then how do you want that to output? Maybe it's a PDF, and then you simply upload your Word document file into that. Um, in this case, it may be this document template I've set up. So I upload it in there, I click save, and then before you leave this menu, you do have to click save so that it updates that. So very easy, quick. If you get that set up, you can be running jobs, and then the process can be, instead of having to run this through another system or whatnot, you can simply calculate everything right in Smart Build, save the job, go to your outputs, and have a really nice, quick and easy process that you can you can get a quote to the customer where you have nice images and all that so i want to recap a few things before we close here the biggest thing to understand is you know you can have as many different versions of these outputs that you need so there may be cases where you have a few bid sheets and then when it becomes a contract you need a contract for the job or proposal or maybe you have a residential output versus a commercial style output so again you can have several different styles of outputs and when it comes to the output there are some limitations um, with this output sheet today and, and one of those would be an example would be if you have wainscot on a building and you list the wainscot material well if the wainscot gets turned off the, the material may still show up as you know it lists out the material of that wainscot and there's a few little things like that um, it, it's it involves merge fields within word and we have some updates coming up on that so that is a limitation um, one one thing that you can do is if you do some stud frame buildings versus a post frame building or maybe you have a certain style steel framing that you're doing and you do a few different styles you may want to think about that and have a have a bid sheet set up for each style so that when that style comes up you can simply click that output and you don't have to do a bunch of editing and i've even seen some sales teams have a different bid sheet for each salesperson where it's all personalized and, and when that that user, they can simply click their bid sheet and download the one that's personalized for them. So on the downside is when it comes to your database and your company's database, everyone within your builder area or your distributor is going to see the same list of outputs. Now, if you create a new builder account under you, you can have a different set of outputs for that area. So some companies will set up a, you know, maybe a retail sales builder, and then they can have a set of outputs that only apply to that that team. So again, there's a lot you can do just, just thinking through that. Um, but yes, you can have as many different versions of these outputs that you need. And I know this example that I showed here is, is all wood framing. So if you're doing a steel frame setup, again, this, this all works the exact same way. Your templates may look a little bit different, but it still all works the same way. So again, that wraps up this episode. I hope this helps everyone and we'll see you next time.